again, Heidi. Hi, Karen. I'm your host, Karen Vizda, for this segment of Table Talk. I'm so pleased to be back with you to discuss Petition Warrant Article 28, Required Public Input, which you sponsored. Yes, I did. Very exciting. Would you like me to read it? I would. That would be a great way to get started. All right. Petition Article 28, Required Public Input. Should the town require any public board, committee, or general public meeting to include time for public input regarding anything that board or committee has control over at the start of each meeting? This will offer consistent and reliable opportunities for citizens to express their thoughts, insights, concerns, thanks, and ideas, which will foster understanding and transparency. And it is not recommended by the Board of Selectmen four to one. And as a sponsor of Warrant Article 28, mm -hmm. you are not, not the only person who thought this was an important topic. Correct. So in order for a petition warrant article to be on the ballot, you need a certain number of signatures. And in my case, we got over 40 signatures. Are there many meetings without public input happening now? Um, there are a few without public input, one mainly being the planning board and also a safety committee meeting and some other meetings that I may not even be aware of. How this came about was I had some concerns about a previously approved plan by the planning board and there had been some changes and some news articles and some research that I had done that I wanted to bring to the planning board without the ability to do so because there was no general public input. The only way for me to bring this information forward was to go to the Board of Selectmen meeting, inform the liaison, and ask the liaison to then bring it to the planning board. And it was very interesting because when I went and I started presenting the information concerning this planning board issue, the chair questioned whether this was appropriate for me to be doing and, and I said it was because this was the only place I could inform the liaison publicly about my concerns. So that's really how this Warren article came to be. I see. Why do you believe the Board of Selectmen did not recommend this Warren article four to one? I was very surprised by that because I truly believe that public input has no negative. The chair can be the person who ensures that whoever is giving the public input is doing it in an appropriate manner within the guidelines of public meeting um, rules, which are set by each committee. So I don't see any downside to public input. When I was listening to the Board of Selectmen meeting when they were discussing this, there was some concern that if the planning board offered public input at the start of each meeting, that there might be some things raised that might influence the decisions made later in that meeting. I didn't quite follow that because information is what you need in order to make a valid decision. So any public input, I view it as information, not as creating a bias one way or the other or having great influence other than the information that's being presented. Very important point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So why should people vote yes on Warrant Article 28? I am asking everyone to vote yes on Warrant Article 28. What I've been hearing over the past year is that the citizens of Hudson want more information and to have a better understanding of the decisions that are being made in our town. With public input, you can not only make a statement, but you can ask questions. And these questions are then formally in the public record. And I think getting information, questions, concerns, even celebrations on public record is critical to continuing to make Hudson a great town to call home. I ask you to vote yes on Warren Article 28. It sounds great. Thank you so much for watching Table Talks with Heidi Jacoby. I'm Karen Vizda, and I want to thank Heidi for raising this very important topic in this town. 
So I ask you all, be informed and get out and vote.